we had to convert to fullness to a uh, two seat fleet fighter, eight guns, monoplane, Rolls Royce engine, but with provision from an observer in the back because it was designed before the day's radar. And um, it's a good plane, and you could do anything with it, you could do loop it and roll it, whatever. The Ferry Aviation Company, famous builders of the Swordfish and the Albacore, and experts in the special needs of the Navy, produced the first eight-gun, two-seater fighter for the fleet era, the Ferry Fulmer. A monoplane with folding wings, her family resemblance to the Ferry Battle is very marked. Well, the Fulmer was a delightful aircraft, absolutely free of, of vice, a gentleman's aircraft to fly. Unfortunately, it needed at least another thousand horsepower and, uh, and obviously better aerodynamic characteristics to get the adequate performance required. But it could absorb a great deal of punishment and was quite a comparatively easy aircraft to deck land and was very, very reliable. Now hold everything and let's get to know her thoroughly, emphasizing her chief points with diagram. Tapered nose of an inline Merlin engine, long deep radiator set well forward, exceptionally long glass house, streamlined into long straight tapered fuselage. Tailplane set well forward of the large fin and rudder, which has straight leading edge, rounded top and straight trailing edge, signature of the Ferry Aviation Company. It was the fighter uh, of, of, of the Navy at the time, the, the former, before the uh, Marshalists and the Hurricanes came in. But, so the former was a very... There again, it was a good gun base, but it was heavier. Not all that much bigger than the, the Hurricane, but a bit. It was a good, good solid aircraft. The, the turning circle wasn't so tight, obviously, as the, as the slightly the smaller type aircraft. But it was just as aerobatic and manoeuvrable as the others, but uh, not quite so quickly. But, uh, because it wasn't so fast as the others. Although I, I was quite happy flying it. I did my original deck landings in it, in fact. Yeah. But it's, all, it's, it's, it's then the experience you gain yourself and the confidence in the aircraft as to how much you can throw it around, get out of trouble. Or put, yeah. they, they used to joke about the formula that if you crash landed in a wood, both the wings would be torn off, the tail would be torn off, and you'd finish up still sitting in the cockpit quite comfortably. But, uh, so it had a good reputation of being solidly built, yeah. Now then, naval gunners, one of your own, head on. Flat-sided fuselage, pretty deep too, thanks to that centre radiator. Low wing, thick at the roots, and sharp dihedral. Tailplane clearly visible. Fleet air arm fighter, the Fulmer, right enough. The S-808 squadron was the uh, Fulmer's, the new fleet fighter. A fairy Fulmer with eight 303 guns firing forwards. It was really underpowered with a Merlin, which wasn't enough to carry an observer and all his equipment. Uh, anyway, and then... When the Battle of Britain started, we were transferred to the RAF Fighter Command and based at Castletown in the north of Scotland. And, of course, we chucked the observer out and, uh, and all his equipment to make ourselves a little bit lighter. And we pretended we were hurricanes. Of course, we weren't. Uh, and we were there to defend Scabberflow and, north, and the northern parts. Uh, the only... Any engagements we ever had really was weather. Charlie it was a, a condor. He used to fly around finding out what the weather was like, and uh, he was much faster than we were, so we never caught him up. So the fact that though we are one of the two squadrons that are included in the role of the uh, Battle of Britain honours, uh, we we don't like to talk too much about the fact that uh, we were at the the safe end of the line rather than in the brunt of the battle. Those sort of things. Anyway, shortly after that, we embarked in the Ark Royal. So the first time I landed a Fulmer on the deck of the Ark Royal was about October 19, 
40. And I was thinking we were going out to chase those German raiders down in the South Atlantic. I took my pair of sporting guns. Can you imagine the attitude that one had? Almost plus fours for golf clubs and things like that. But still, war had not dawned properly. We're going to South Africa, Simon's Town. Very good duck shooting, they said down there. <laughs> so what with people taking golf clubs and sporting guns? Of course, we never got anywhere near South Africa. Uh, the grass bay was then over. Um, and we joined Force H under James Somerville, Admiral James Somerville. What a splendid admiral he was uh, in, at Gibraltar. Gibraltar with the bright lights, no blackout, plenty of fruit, very cheap booze, was marvellous. My first memory of uh, Force H was um, Christmas Day. I think there may have been things before that, but anyway, Christmas Day, we were at four hours' notice for steam, and on Christmas Day, the cry went round. You know what happens in, in a tiny place like Jib. People were ashore taking... Uh, visiting parties and so on. Uh, and a, cry, a town crier actually went through the streets calling all members of Force H to report back on board at once and then we got back. Uh, I just caught the ship by jumping across the gangway. Fortunately, uh, the gangway had been drawn in. I had to make a jump for a rope. Uh, we got on board and it was... Within one and a half hours of getting our orders to go to sea, we were doing 25 knots out of the Straits of Gibraltar into the Atlantic. We left quite a number of people behind. But that's when we had to chase one of these Scharnhorst affairs. And then they were miles and miles away. Having steered north, uh, they realized that they'd never, ever have any chance of doing a reconnaissance with swordfish in the known position of the Shan horse at that time. So Rupert Tillard in the Fulmer, which was about three times faster, four times faster uh, than the um, swordfish, he took off at four o'clock in the afternoon on Christmas Day. We were in the dark by 4.30 and it blinded off into the dark and at four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's about five hours later. Uh, I thought we'd never see him again. Of course, he never found any trace of anything. What a brave thing to do, to fly off into that dark and land back in the dark, too, with hardly any lights on deck. A very fine piece of airmanship. Now you can see the flat-sided fuselage again. And here's another point to remember. Her sharp dihedral seems to disappear in this view. And we are re-equipped with Fumars and uh, joined the Formidable, which is a new ship then. It was a bit faster. It wasn't really a fighter, though. It was a, it was a hideous kind of thing. <laughs> well, it was a sort of... It was a bit like the fairy battle to look at. It didn't have an awful lot of speed. I don't remember what his top speed was. We could still catch up with Savoia 79s and things like that. It would be wrong to say that it, it was a, a great improvement. It's quite easy to fly. It had eight guns. It had eight forward fire guns, like a Spitfire. Oh, that was a very good thing. And we, and we had a measure of RT that worked, so we could do a certain amount of voice communication. But... Uh, it wasn't a fighter. But one thing about it was it wasn't a dive bomber either. So we didn't have to do any of this charge of the light brigade business. We were involved in quite a lot of uh, fighting in the Mediterranean, um, with mostly against the Italian Air Force. And we found them quite easy to deal with, actually. Catch up the Savoia 79s and can't float planes and things, and we, we used to shoot them down. This gets easier every time. Long, slim fuselage and deep radiator set well forward. Yes, it's a Fulmer, all right. 
the former. Um, it was uh, another failed fighter. Better than the battle was, but uh, it was a fairy former, fairy battle, they're all fairy aeroplanes. Um, it was originally the former was used in camp ships, uh, which we're going to talk about in a while, but far too heavy. And anyway, didn't need an observer, didn't need anybody in the other company, did it? Uh, but it was, it gave you an introduction to flying a monoplane, a tin aeroplane, not one covered with, with, with uh, wood and, uh, and canvas. Um, a lot heavier aeroplane, a lot higher powered aeroplane. Gave you that introduction. And uh, manoeuvrability, well, uh, this was strange to us, but of course, eventually, under the Hurrican training, more manoeuvrable still. It's all a question of progressing by degrees. Straight taper to stubby wing plan, rounded tips. There's plenty of cockpit showing even in this view. I think the relief of actually catching a wire is probably the highlight of one's day. <laughs> if you, you've caught the wire, then you know you're safe. You might, you might still do damage to the aircraft, but at least you're not going to. You're going to stay on board. If you don't catch a wire, you're going into the barrier, and you're probably going to get a bloody nose. And former was um, about 70, 75, quite, quite, uh, quite reasonable. And uh, if you have 30 knots over the deck, you see, your actual landing speed is quite low, really. Yeah. Very good viz and a very good undercarriage. And it was a, a real doddle for deck landing. It's wonderful. Yes, and the Firefly following it, in fact, was similar. I think the worst one I had was in a, uh, in a full mile when I had been uh, chasing a, an Italian spotter plane and I'd only just got the legs of this plane and I crept up behind him to try and shoot him down and his rear gunner managed to put a 50 millimeter bullet right in the middle of the constant speed unit of the propeller and the windscreen was blacked out with oil as he hit it and the, the air screw went into fully fine pitch all in one moment <laughs> and I then had to come back and land this playing with the with the windscreen covered in oil that was the worst one I can remember I think. Fulmer's distinctive rear view the tail plane is set that's right well forward of fairy fin and rudder. From Macrahanish I was appointed to join 884 squadron at Yeovilton this was a newly formed Fulmer Squadron, flying fairy Fulmers, again with Merlin engines, Fulmer Mark IIs, uh, with a view to ultimately, after working up the squadron, joining HMS Victorious as a frontline fighter squadron. Well, landing on Victorious was a great pleasure because earlier we'd done some of our first deck landings in HMS Argus, which was a, a very, very small carrier, a converted uh, merchantman uh, with a, a deck of about 50 or 60 percent area compared with, with Victorious's. So we were able to uh, carry out deck landings in Victorious with, with relative ease. We had so much speed and distance. And of course, the aircraft carrier was able to give us much more wind over the deck for landing. So our relative speed was lower than it was possible in HMS Argus, whose flat out speed would be around about 20 knots as compared with 30 of the big fleet carriers. As she flies across your front, you can check up on some of those points. In this view, the radiator well forward, the long glass house, and the very large fin and rudder extending well behind the tailplane are all points to go for. The former looks slim and rakish in this view, doesn't she? We were, we were trained, funnily enough, on uh, <coughs> hurricanes, but did uh, deck landings on fulmers, uh, which were dirty great heavy things. 
they were used as fighters but I, I, I wouldn't like to have fought with them I didn't uh, I'd say it was too awkward no no I wouldn't have wanted it to, compared with with a Hellcat for instance I would prefer a Hellcat any day of the week and a Hellcat for landing was a perfect aircraft for landing on deck well of course I only did deck landings in it uh, we went up and uh, to the Clyde and did four deck landings on the Argus and that was it you were a fully qualified pilot then <laughs> they could ship you anywhere well it was it w was used for fighter operations in the Med I think and other places so I believe but uh, that was before my time really we've now got to about Christmas 42 here she comes to give you the once over As she flies overhead, check up on the Fulmer silhouette. Notice especially how far forward the tail plane is set. One week's training on the, the catapult, which was launching off this ramp with this... this uh, they were rocket-assisted. They weren't actually... It wasn't a catapult as, as they have on the, on the carrier. It was a, a, a ramp. The ships, the cam ships, were mainly RAF manned, but there were, I think, five uh, which were manned by Navy. Some had full Mars and some had Hurricanes. Um, I think they were not a particularly attractive job, I don't think, especially in the Hurricane, which was a bailout or, or um, the chance of survival on ditching was pretty small, I think. Well, they had this scoop underneath, the air intake underneath was, was or radiator rather, was fairly well aft, and it had a, a, a very strong pitching moment on the aircraft when it touched down, and they sank almost immediately. We had one chap who survived the ditching, a chap called Everett, um, but uh, we had one or two others who didn't. So what was the drill? I mean, what, what did you do? Did well, you bail out, really. Yeah. I never had to, no. I was fortunate, in, 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 I was in a former-based one, and um, the only time I was shot off was I was within range of Gibraltar. So you, could, you, you had a much longer range in a former than you did in a, in a uh, uh, hurricane, of course. So next time you see a low-wing monoplane with a long, slim fuselage, evenly tapered wings, long glass house, and a large fin and rudder extending well behind the tailplane, it's a Fulmer, and one of the fleet's finest fighters. To give you an idea of the effects of hangovers, one, one day a bit of a hangover, you see when you picked your wheels up in the Fulmer, um, when they were down, they were red lights, and then they went green as you were changing, then, then, then the wheels clocked in and the green lights went off. I was coming up from this cloud, these bloody green lights in my eyes, and the plane wouldn't climb, it was sluggish as hell. Got up on top, and my friend said, pick your wheels up, your ass. <laughs> I was too do dozy. That was a minor thing. Here we go, Dobson. Good luck. Thank you, sir. This is it. You've said it. <laughs> <laughs> 